Hey there, it's Rachel from All About The House. If we haven't met before, I'm a graphic designer and this is my printable shop on Etsy. Um, so I am absolutely obsessed with planners, everything to do with planners, especially making printables. So one of the things that I've been making lately for my planner is a planner bookmark. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can make your own planner bookmark. So open up Photoshop and then go to File, New and choose whatever the page size is that you'll be printing on. So that's your standard page size for the country that you live in. If you live in the US, you would choose US paper. If you live in Australia like I do, you pick international paper and that's A4 page size, which I believe the UK uses as well. And then I just leave all these other settings as default, whatever Photoshop um, comes up with and hit OK. So how big you make your page mark, your bookmark, whatever you want to call it, really depends on what planner size that you're using. If you're using a personal size planner, you obviously want to make it smaller than if you were using a full page size planner versus like an Erin Condren plum paper, Lime Life, etc. What I tend to do is do a two inch wide by six inch high and that suits my EC planner, my plum paper, my Lime Life planner and then also if I'm doing um, printables for my half size planner. So I have a lot of planners and that I've found is the size that suits most of them. So that's the size I'm going to use in this video. You can do whatever size that you want. So let's create a new layer and then come over to the shape tool and you want to choose rectangle. So if you don't have that showing already in your version of Photoshop, right click and choose rectangle. You can make it whatever color that you want. So you could just do a solid color page um, marker bookmark, but I like to add a pattern to it. So what I do is I just make it black so it's really easy to see against this colored, uh, sorry, this white background. You want to pick a color so that it stands out rather than obviously choosing gray because that's a bit hard to see. So I'm just going to go with black and then left click. So I know that I want mine to be 2 inches wide by 6 inches high. You will just type in whatever dimensions you want it to be and hit OK. So that's fine. We can have a bookmark like that. But to me, that's a little bit boring. And I like adding a little tab to the top of it. So if you don't want to pay for dividers or you don't want them um, big dividers, you want to create a whole bunch of these and print it out on one piece of paper to save money then adding a little tab to the top is a great way to fit heaps of these on one page. You can fit tons on, you can swap them out all the time. Um, they're really quick to do when it's just this mini size and they take up less ink as well than doing a full um, half page size divider. So I'm going to create a new layer and then create our little tab. So come over to the shape menu again, right click and I'm going to choose the rounded rectangle tool. You can use the ellipse tool if you wanted to create a circle up the top here but circle is more annoying to cut out and I prefer rounded rectangle if you did want to wanted to you could just have a rectangle which would give you square corners this one will give you just a little bit of roundness um, but not so much that it's annoying to cut out and then I'm going to left click so I made it two inches wide so I'm going to make it half of that so it's about one inch you can make it really small if you wanted to you could even make this wider. You don't have to make it two inches. You could go like four inches and then do four tabs that are one inch wide. So play around with it until you're happy with whatever sizes suit the planner that you're using. Because there's so many different planners these days, I really can't tell you which is like, oh my God, the best size to use. This is what I've found I've preferred. So I'm going to go one inch wide by um, 0 0.5 inches high and the radius of 50 pixels. So that's how round it is. So the larger number you put here, the more rounded your edges will be. So the larger number, the more you'll end up with like a circle rather than just a rounded corner. And then hit OK. So now I'm going to zoom in so I can see better what we're doing. And I'm going to left click and drag this down. So you'll see that mine snaps. If your version of Photoshop is not doing that, make sure you have view and snap ticked and then I have all these things ticked as well, guides, grids, layers, etc. And it will automatically do it for you. So see how it automatically found the edge and snaps? It's a really cool tool. One of the reasons I love Photoshop. And then the other thing that it does is snaps it to the top here. So it snapped it to the side over here and when I bring it down it automatically finds the midpoint of my tab. So I've got the same amount up the top here as I do down the bottom, we just can't see it. So if I change the color of my tab if I made it green, for example, now we can see better. We've got half up the top, half down the bottom. So make sure you've got snap selected. Cool. So now we've got one tab. And to add our tab for the left, you would just create a duplicate of that layer, that tab, by pressing Control J. Then press Control T on your keyboard. Hold down Shift, left click, and drag it across. 
Holding down shifts keeps it perfectly straight, so we've now got them, see how it's the same amount of height, and press enter to place it. So then when you wanted to create your divider, you would just create another copy of your actual like divider bookmark by pressing control J, then left click and drag that up. So now we've got two bookmarks. We've got this one with the left tab and then we've also got the right tab. So what I tend to do is create a copy of these so I have a version later on if I wanted to come back and tweak the size. I just like to keep a master copy so I don't have to recreate this. To do that, just click on your top layer, hold down shift and then click on your bottom. So you've got your tab and your bookmark selected. Then press control J to create a duplicate. And then I just like to keep those there as a template. If you double left click, you can rename them. So template, tab left, and then the page marker, bookmark, whatever you wanted to call it. So now I've always got these again if I wanted to use them in the future. And you can do the same with the top layers as well to create um, your other template as well. So we've got the template for a um, tab right. And then we've already got our page marker, so we can delete that. Cool, so now we can merge these layers together so that when we move it, we can move it all as one piece. So click on your first layer, your tab, press control, and then click on your page marker, and then right click merge shapes. So now this is all one thing. If we turn these layers back on and you want to move this, you'll see that it takes this and leaves the tab. It doesn't move it all as one piece. So that's why we merge them together. So left click, hold down shift, and click on your um, tab. Ran, whoops. Uh, wrong one. Hide that. Yep, okay, so we've got the bookmark and the tab. Right click and merge shapes. So now we've got two tabs. We've got a left and a right one. So now this is where the fun part begins. Now we can start adding text and patterns and whatever you wanted to do. So you could change the color by clicking here and then changing the fill color. If you just wanted solid colored tabs, we could go with a hot pink. You could go with a blue. You can make so many tabs really quickly and these are really cheap and affordable to add to your planner. You could do a whole collection um, of whatever colors that you wanted. But I'm going to add a pattern to mine. So I'm going to create a new layer. Go to File, New. I'm sorry, New File. And then I'm going to make it 12 by 12 inches. And the reason for that is because I'm going to use a digital paper. So a digital paper is basically like, think of it like scrapbooking paper and paper that you can buy from a craft shop only in digital. So there's literally like millions of different patterns, colors, sizes, shapes that you can get in digital paper. You can do like anything you can think of. So you can purchase digital paper from my shop on Etsy, which is called Paper Cravings. And I do have an e-course where I teach how to make patterns from scratch if you're interested in learning. And the e-course is called How to Make Patterns in Photoshop and Monetize Your Designs. I'll include a link below if you are interested in the e-course. Otherwise, you can purchase digital paper from any number of Etsy shops, um, not just mine. There's tons and tons on there. You can find anything that you want. So go 12 by 12 inches and hit OK. If a digital paper that you've purchased is in letter size, you would just enter in 8.5 by 11 and hit OK. Then you want to locate the file on your computer. So this is one that I made earlier. I'm just going to click on that file, left click and drag it into Photoshop and then press enter to place it. So the reason I went to the effort of creating a new file is because now when I bring this into my other template, I can resize it and it won't be all pixely and yuck because when you bring it in to your um, already like printed size, because this is 12 by 12 inch and we're shrinking it down, if you left click and drag it in, you'll notice that it automatically reduces so it's on the um, left and the right and you've got this weird gap up the top. If you were using 8.5 by 11 inch digital paper, you wouldn't have that problem. But with a 12 by 12 inch, um, you do. It's not so big a deal for a bookmark the size that we did. But if you were doing a really large one for, say, the um, like the Happy Planner, which is the really big size, the big Happy Planner, then it would go really blurred and pixely, and your pattern wouldn't cover the whole um, template unless you dragged it out. And when you expand out, it makes it real fuzzy and the image quality reduces and it just doesn't look very nice. So anyway, now that I've gone off on my tangent, we'll go back to our original um, pattern here and then right click and go duplicate and then bring it back into your first one and hit OK. Okay, so now we've got it, um, see how it's larger and it's expanding the edges of our page, like it hits the edges, we don't have that awkward gap up the top and the bottom like we did before. Now we can apply this to our page marker. 
So you've got your pattern layer and place that above whatever tab that you want to do. So you can rename these. This was my left tab and this one is my right tab. Remember that you can create more of these. You could have like four tabs across the top. Um, you can have whatever number that you want depending on how wide you want them to be. So you want to click on your pattern layer, right click and choose create clipping mask and that will apply it to the layer that you've got it directly above. So if I wanted this applied to my right tab, I would left click and drag it down, then right click create clipping mask and then you'll have it on your right tab. So at the moment the pattern doesn't look that great, it's a bit gappy, it's a bit big, I'm going to shrink it down. So press Control T on your keyboard, then choose one of the corners. Very important that you choose a corner, don't choose one of these ones because it will distort your pattern. See how it looks really, to be honest it looks really shit there because it's all squished. So we don't want to do that, you always want to choose a corner. And then hold down Shift and that will maintain its proportions. So I'm going to shrink this right down. That looks pretty good. Press enter when you're happy with the size. And I'm going to move the arrow keys to push it down a bit. Cool. I'm happy with that. So we can move it across to the left a little bit. I like to have about half of the shape appearing on the left and about half on the right. It just makes it look neater. So that looks pretty good. Um, so you can leave them like that and print it out. You can fill out the whole sheet. You can do um, just create a copy. So control J and then you've got another copy of it. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so you can fill out your whole page that way or the other thing that you can do is add some text up to the top of your tab. To do that just create a new layer, come over to the shape tool again and make sure you've still got it on rounded rectangle. You can make your little tab whatever color that you want it to be. I'm going to go with white because then I can see my text easier and then you would just left click and drag. So 50 looks a bit wide. I'm going to undo that and drop it back to, say, 25 pixels. And then create my little text. That looks good. You can make it a specific size if you want, but I just eyeball it because, I mean, it looks pretty good as it is. Cool. So it looks quite nice. If you want to make sure you've got an even amount on the left and the right, click on your marquee tool, left click on the edge of your tab, drag it across until you're hitting the right side of it. So I'm not quite on the right side there. Left click and drag. Oops, I'm off the edge again. I'm not normally this unco. Alright, cool. And then click that button there and it will align it to the center of your tab. So if you wanted to add text to your tab, <clears throat> excuse me, just click on the text tool. I'm just going to pause the video for a sec, guys. Okay, I'm back. Random coughing bit over. Alright, so let's add some text. So click on your text tool and then left click and then you can type whatever text that you want for your tab. So let's say you wanted to go list. So you just type in your text, press control A and then you can make it whatever color that you want. If you want to color match your tab, you would just click on this button here and then left click wherever you've got that color. So you could go with the blue or you could go with the pink and hit OK. And then we can reduce the font size down to suit our tab. Let's go with, say, 15. Whoops, not 125, 15. Click on your Move tool and then left click to drag it up to your tab. And with the Snap tool that I showed you earlier, remember it was View Snap, it automatically finds like the center point for you. So it automatically went to the center there. If not, you can always align it by clicking on your text layer and then clicking on your white tab writing space. Click that button and then align it to the center as well. So that's how I do my tabs. If you wanted to have a whole bunch of tabs that had the text on top, then I recommend that you create this template here, everything that you want on it. So if you want text, if you want the white little um, writing space, make it all and then click on your first text layer, hold down shift and click on your last layer that makes up that tab, press control J and then you can move that across and then you'll have that tab completely ready to go and all you need to do is add um, a new pattern or change out the color. You don't have to re-add the little tab and align it correctly, etc. So make one copy of what you want your like master template to be and then create a whole bunch of copies with all your different patterns, colors, everything, etc. So that's how I make my page markers or my tabs in Photoshop. I then print them out and you can print them onto cardstock, you could do glossy sticker paper that really makes the colors pop and stand out and look really good. You could also do matte label paper. 
um, and then photo paper also looks nice as well, makes the colors stand out. And then you can laminate them if you want extra durability. And when you cut out the laminate, just make sure you leave a little bit around the edge. You can also leave more on the side here if you wanted to have that as your hole punch section in, in your laminate and then not actually cut into the tab when you hole punch or use the arc planner punch or the Mambi punch, Mambi happy planner punch, etc. Um, if you wanted them to stick out a bit further so you could add like a half a centimeter edge of laminate as well that way or just laminate cut around the edge and then put your holes in here. You can do, um, you don't have to do laminate but I find that it makes it more durable. I do not recommend printing them just onto paper because it'll be really flimsy and you won't use it very often before it gets damaged. So cardstock at a minimum cardstock and laminating really good you want to make the colors pop glossy label paper so that's how I make my bookmarks I hope you found this video helpful if you did then I'll include a link below this video where you can subscribe to my YouTube channel where I have heaps more graphic design tutorials planner related stuff lots and lots of planner stuff because I'm absolutely obsessed with making planner stuff so if you have any requests for videos as well just let me know via email which is all about the house etsy at gmail.com.